So thanks a lot for being here first, sir. And uh, my own, my first question would be that, sir, you've been to uh, Unilever for so long time, and now you're heading a institution, a very good one. So you have a good experience and a very sublime experience of blended experience of both of them, industry and academia. We keep on talking about industry academia gap. So according to you, which one is more accountable and responsible for this gap? Okay, so first of all, I don't have a mixed experience of academia and industry. I'm, I have more of a business-oriented uh, background. But having said that, so I don't think it's one more responsible than the other. Mm. It's one working together and supporting the other. Mm. Right. So there are things which the industry wants to do, mm. is doing, and mm. sees a way forward. Mm. And to make that happen, uh, the industry does need a resource mm. uh, and the key resource for that is the human resource mm. Right? Mm. and therefore it becomes the academia's responsibility mm. to actually understand what the industry needs yes. and build it within the curriculum or the education system mm. so that both grow hand in hand mm. otherwise academia won't grow beyond of time because if, if what they are producing is not going to get consumed by the corporates and okay. the industry the academia it will stop somewhere or the other Yes. And if industry needs something and academia can't produce that, mm. then industry also will not be able to grow. So it's yes. both hand in hand. And sir, one question that uh, we, are, we all keep hearing about automation. So do you have any conjecture even or any calculated guess that these kinds of jobs would, would be somehow obsolete in India particularly uh, because of automation? No, it's not that easy. So what are you automating? Hmm. You are automating typically uh, repeatable processes which are being done by people. Hmm. Right? Now you need a set of people who will understand what is to be automated. Automation. So that part of it cannot be done without human resource. Okay. The other thing which you are looking at is, so if today I am doing a process and it's hmm. working, hmm. is that the process which is going to continue year after year for time to come? Hmm. So there will be new processes which will come into place, there will be new designs which will come into place, mm. there will be new requirements which will come into place. Mm. So what you are producing today may not be what it is, maybe five years from now, maybe three years from now. So the products will evolve, the services will evolve and every time it evolves, you need a new set of skills, you need new sets of uh, you know, people who are going to do that yes. or the same people who are going to do that. Yes. So there is no dearth of growth. There is, I mean, when people say, you know, um, there are two and a half lakh jobs or five lakh jobs are never going to die out. Yes, yes. There will always be jobs. Yes. But are you getting the right kind of people? Are you developing the right kind of people to do that? So automation is just easing some of the set standard processes. It is not eating into jobs and it will not eat into jobs. Okay. Thanks a lot for clarifying, Thanks, sir. One more question. Uh, if I remember correctly, that Bennett University has a very good provision of like how the last semester and the last year of the students would be somehow coupled with the industry, education. Uh, in one another session, Manish, sir, the uh, secretary of uh, uh, head of group head of strategy planning of uh, NSDC, he was telling about that if the, those all the internship learning, if the person or the students is not somehow again immediately applying into the applied apply applications he or she will forget. And in that moment, I found this provision of Bennett University a very sublime and very splendid one. So uh, would, the, would the university be propagating it to the other universities? See, if you, so okay, so let's look at it like this. There's something called an internship, which hmm. in any case is inherently part of the UGC regulation. Hmm. Now, how many actually apply it uh, is the question. Yes. Second is, uh, the people who apply it also, what is the thought and the seriousness behind it? Yes. You can do an internship where, and I've seen many happen in the past, where people will just go spend that four weeks or six weeks in a corporate, um, end up learning nothing, contributing nothing and come back. Yes. Okay. Then there is a whole structure which needs to be put behind it. And I think we've been there for well ahead of times as Bennett University where we are pretty clear. So one of the things which we try and do is you need to understand what is the student capable of doing mm -hmm. 
at the end of year one, year two, year three and year four. Based on that is where you then approach a corporate or an no, industry and say this is what my kid is able to do, this is what he's capable of. So will he get something to do in your corporate or your industry which is going to be in line with what he's learned rather than it being a free for all. Yes. That there are these hundred kids, so please give them something to do. Mm. Right? So, so that focus has to be brought in. Yes. And I think that way, <coughs> in our case, we've been lucky, our, our faculty and our uh, deans have been, you know, proactive, where they've been able to create the same depth of knowledge uh, in, let's say, not the seventh semester, but maybe in the six semesters, and yet give that one year available to the student to actually go and put into action mm. whatever they've learned mm. and the reverse learning of what is actually happening in the corporate world and plugging it back into the curriculum. Yes. That's a very good one. And one more question, sir. That uh, I found it and I keep repeating it because somehow it needs those kind of attention. Bennett Ministry has, again, I would say BFSI, Master in BFSI and Logistic. Uh, would the university introduce more such kinds of uh, unconventional but potential courses? Well, we have a plethora of them lined up. The only question is how, how soon is, is the market ready to take it up? Okay, yes. yes. And I won't say more than that because there are many of them lined up. Yeah, I know. I know because somehow we, we even in journalism, we keep on hearing that market decides everything. So somehow uh, this is the thing. <laughs> no, so <coughs> I, I don't say that, you know, um, I am starting a program today because I see that, you know, those kind of jobs are available immediately. Yes, exactly. So one of the things which we believe in is that there are lots of stuff we do in the university mm -hmm. where we are creating people who are going to be able to do things which are right now not seen as jobs, mm -hmm. but will come in we'll the come next in two, future. three, five years. Yes. Thanks a lot for sir. Thanks a lot oh, for sir. all thank the all so the insights. Thank, thank you, you so much. Being here, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.